The current car dealership model is fundamentally flawed. For years, dealers cried about a few individuals flipping vehicles online for substantial profits. But now, the dealers have lived long enough to see themselves become the villain because they are the ones now exploiting their monopoly over limited vehicle allocations to rake in enormous profit. For two years, I've been navigating the maze of dealerships in pursuit of a C8 Z06. And just as we edge closer to the announcement of a C801, a new twist emerges. Because what if I told you I've uncovered not only why my Z06 allocations have disappeared, but also why your Z06 allocation isn't coming either? And what if I told you an email from a certain dealer, details of upcoming Z01s are heading straight to the auction blocks? <laughs> Welcome to the thousands of new enthusiasts who have recently joined us in the last few weeks. Today, I want to take you on a journey through time and tell you a tale about ambition and deception. Let's open our book, shall we? Two years ago, I set out on a mission to acquire a C8 Z06 at MSRP, and I found myself on Chapman's waiting list, sitting about 30 behind everybody else. Despite these odds, being double digits behind other people, hope was a fuel for my quest. But the story took a turn less than a year later because GM was outraged at the dealers who were marketing up Corvettes by $100,000 and they issued a stern warning. In their letter, GM threatened to take action against any unethical sales practices that would tarnish the brand's integrity. The effectiveness of this warning? Well, we see how they handled the issues with Coons teaching them a lesson with this particular Z06. Mary Bear sure seems to have an iron fist. <laughs> but back to the story. In a surprising twist, my local dealer, previously charged at least $30,000 over for a Z06, suddenly invited me to place an order at MSRP. Finally, some progress. Or so I thought. I placed my order with modern Chevy, but the months that followed were riddled with uncertainty and silence. No order number, no purchase sheet, nothing. Despite their assurances and visible deliveries of Z06s, my order seemed lost in limbo. They mentioned rolling my order over to a new model year, but without documentation. How could I trust their word? Meanwhile, Chapman remained a distant possibility, a backup plan that might just might come through, right? But now we arrive at the present day and I have some insight into the covert maneuvers of these Chevy dealers. Maneuvers designed to sidestep GM's so-called love letter, a letter it turns out that has barely caused even a paper cut to a single owner of a GM store. The hard truth is this, GM along with many other manufacturers will never penalize dealerships. Why? Because ultimately the dealerships are the true customers and you don't bite the D that feeds you. And in this case, the D stands for dealer. These manufacturers can issue all these stern warnings and claiming that tarnishing their reputation will lead to a reduction in vehicle allocations. But yet we live in the real world and such threats feel more like a hollow gesture to con the public to trust them again. Why would the manufacturers honestly care about dealers marking up vehicles for the customers? By the time a car leaves the production line, the dealer has already paid for it. There is minimal incentive to penalize dealers, especially when these markup cars continue to sell. The truth is, dealers have monopolized the system and they're the gatekeepers, the only ones who can place order for new vehicles. And in this screwed up marketplace, it's often in the smaller, more customer focused dealers who get the short end of the stick by missing out on allocations for all the high demand vehicles. This imbalance only fuels the greed of these larger dealerships. Consider this, a study back in 2016 revealed that 87% of Americans were dissatisfied with some aspect of car buying process. And I will bet you top dollar that number has only gotten worse since then, particularly with these rampant dealer shenanigans that I've observed with not just Chevy, but across all brands. Now you take modern Chevy, for example, 
they've been receiving Z06s, but from what I've been told, they also been engaging in biddings for those vehicles. This is not an isolated incident. This is systematic corruption. Chapman, my initial hope, hasn't even updated me on my position on the waiting list, which for all I know, could have plummeted all the way back to 99 because of this video. But I got 99 problems and greedy dealers ain't one. It's become apparent that these dealers are hoarding a lot of these allocations only to auction them off to the highest bidder. Chapman, for example, confirmed that they will be taking their allocations and placing them on bringer trailer. So what is the point of having even allocation waiting list if all you're gonna do is take all your cars and put them on bringer trailer? You literally conned me for two years thinking that I'm gonna go up on this list and eventually get a car. The future zero ones, don't be surprised if they follow this same routine that they kind of revealed to me because it's right here in this email too. Basically for two years, I've been conned into thinking that I'm on a waiting list for a car that's never gonna arrive because all their cars, regardless if they order in somebody's name or they doing a dealer stock orders, I really hope they didn't order this car in somebody's name and just didn't tell the person that the car came so they just put it on bringer trailer. I really hope this is not the case. This isn't about my experience or any individual struggle. This is a reflection of a broken system a system in dire need of overhaul. We're past due for a serious conversation about the traditional dealership model in today's market. There are still a few beacons of hope. Dealers like Mark Dodge and Granger exemplify what car buying should be about. Honoring the price that is plastered all over the TV commercials, the window stickers, newspapers, YouTube videos, journalist websites like Edmunds, Motor Trend, Sightslight, Nada, KBB, Everywhere you see one price listed, a group of greedy millionaires can bribe, I mean, lobby politicians to rewrite state laws in order for them to get away with this crap. I met some fantastic people at smaller dealerships who generally want to offer you cars like a Red Eye, a Demon, or a Z06 or MSRP, but yet they're handcuffed by the current system, unable to receive allocations because of the size of the dealership. Now imagine a world where buying a car is as straightforward as ordering a Big Mac at McDonald's. Regardless of the store's size, you can walk into any McDonald's franchise and order a Big Mac. Now in the world of car buying, oh sorry sir, we're not big enough store and you can't order a Big Mac here. You gotta go to one of the other bigger stores in order to secure a Big Mac allocation. Or imagine walking to Best Buy for a laptop, then being told that all the inventory is up for auction on eBay due to high demand of back to school shopping. And you had to go win the auction there to come back to the store to buy the car there to finish your purchase. It sounds absurd, right? But that's precisely the landscape of today's car buying experience. Legalized price gouging, bait and switch, collusion, monopoly, whatever you want to call it, these dealers are bribing, I mean lobbying politicians to turn the other cheek and pass laws to make car buying experience worse and worse every single year, year after year. It's high time we question the legality and ethics of a system where dealers hold a monopoly on certain vehicles or auction them off for profit when those vehicles are supposed to be sold in the store. In other industries, such practices would be unthinkable. For example, you can buy an iPhone directly from Apple, or on platforms like Amazon, Verizon, Best Buy, whoever. Those three vendors getting to cahoots with each other to raise up iPhone prices, you still got Apple to buy that phone from, don't you? But in the automotive world, dealers are frustrating thousands of potential buyers and the automotive industry need to be held accountable. We need to be able to buy vehicles straight from the manufacturers to get rid of this markup nonsense. And it's not just the dealers, these manufacturers are doing price gouging too. There is like a $50,000 price gap between a Stingray and a Z06, which is basically nothing but an engine swap and wider fenders. I mean, I would love to see how that happens with Hellcats, between a Hellcat and a Red Eye. There's a $50,000 gap. Ram did an overnight price hike of $10,000 on the last call TRX. Dodge did the same thing too. They knew dealers were lying about the Demon 170s being sold to MSRP, so what they do? They basically did another $10,000 price increase to get some money on top of all these cars about to hit the auction. These are problems that are signs of a deeper issue. I'm gonna call it right now. If these manufacturers, these dealers keep pissing people off, 
they're going to wake up one day and people are not going to be buying cars for them we're all going to basically be keeping the current cars we have running longer to piss them off if they thought the uaw boycott was going to be something wait till you see when you piss off 10 15 20 million people trying to buy a car i dream of a day when dealerships caught manipulating allocations and auction off new vehicles face real consequences i know a dealers who are exporting cars when they're, they're supposed to be illegal but hey they're getting 200k on top of them 170 hey let's export it who's gonna do anything i've reached out to dodge with evidence from dealers across the country exploiting dm 170 sales exploiting the allocation monopoly and nothing has happened and nothing will never happen because they are in on it and as for chapman a dealer many will love to support they too are part of this corruption and chevy won't do a thing about it just like with coons will we see any meaningful action against such practices not with these dealers having politicians in their back pocket it seems we may need to put some fire on these some of these politicians because these are the people who are truly responsible for these dealers getting away with this nonsense they won't let best buy get away with this crap they won't let other industries get away with this crap but because these car dealers are throwing them thousands and thousands of dollars of campaign dollars they're allowing them to get the laws changed but that is a topic for another video but make sure you leave this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you already done so and until the next time i'm out